Today we're going to bring you a great Roman dish, only known to the Romans. The Romans. Called the Bucatini alla Matriciana. Now, Chef Ricky's not Roman, but we're going to let him in on this secret. I'll try. With Amatriciana, you use the jowl of the cheek. But in the United States, it's not around, so we have to use the pancetta. My favorite, Ronnie, my favorite. Little pancetta. We have some fresh tomatoes that we're going to put through the food processor. Of course, some nice Romano cheese. Pecorino Romano, sheep cheese. Sheep cheese. We got a little white wine. From what Rome. kind of wine did we choose today? We use the Roman wine, Frascati. Frascati, that sounds good. Now, of course, our sauce is going to have a little fresh basil in it. We're going to leave a little olive oil in our pan. When we saute the pancetta, we're going to saute it just so it cooks. We're not going to crisp or burn it. Exacto. Exacto. Okay, so let's start off today by showing them what we're going to do with the pancetta. So why don't you take us a slice of that lovely looking pancetta out of there. You go to your Italian grocer and you get about a quarter of an inch slice of pancetta. Italian bacon. So we're going to chop this into cubes. It even it's sounds like good that. as it's being chopped. Yeah, it sounds kind of firm. So what we're going to do right now is we're just going to bring this back, okay? We're going to saute this in our pan. Exacto. Exacto. You add the oil to the pan and you bring it up to a medium heat. At that point, add the pancetta. Be sure you watch while it's cooking. You want to saute it. You don't want to make it crispy. I found in Ronnie's kitchen an authentic food processor. Okay, I'm going to give you this. I'm going to move the tomatoes to the side here. And I'm going to spoon in the tomatoes. You spoon them in. Okay. You got to keep an eye on me here, Ronzo, because I'm used to using these electric food processors. And try, uh, try not to get the sauce, just get the tomato. Just the tomato. And add, keep on adding more. Keep on adding more. And we are grinding the pulp. And we are creating a so we're taking the, the pulp of the taking the juice out of the pulp. You're of the taking the acidity out of the tomato because uh -huh. what you're doing is you're not taking the skin, of which there should be very little, or the seeds. It you smells keep, good already, even keep, before I do anything. You know, you could eat it just the way it is. Just like this. Little bread, little, little bread, basil. Little bread's from good company. And we're we're gonna grind these tomatoes up. Can right. You, can you see a nail? Let's let, let's show the people at home. You see how this is working? It's the old-fashioned way. We're gonna grind this in there. It's going to force the tomato onto the screen, and then what we're going to get is nothing but the good juice, right? Exacto. All right, we Exacto. got the good juice. Now I'm going to put that right here so I don't drip all over our beautiful counter. Look at this. Look at that. Look at that. Perfecto. Okay, now, Ron, this dish requires us to first deglaze the pancetta that's cooking in the pan. Exacto. So what we're going to do is we're going to take about a cup and a half, about a half a cup. It's about a half a cup. Half a cup. The cup we drank, we got the half we, cup left. We drank the other cup. Yeah. So now we're left with half, half a cup. A cup. Got half a cup, okay? But we, we must tell our audience, we're using the wine of Rome. You should always marry the wine to the region. For example, if you are doing a dish from Umbria, you would not use a wine from Sicilia. If you're in Sicilia, you would not use a wine from Rome. So ah. today, we are using a Roman wine because we are making a Roman, Roman dish. dish. Join us Very back here important. at the stove, where we have our lovely, lovely pancetta cooking. Okay? So what we're going to do with this is now you can see that we didn't brown it, right? Oh, no, you don't we brown it. We only cooked it just a bit so that we got the flavor to start to kind of infuse from this olive oil. And you can see those little bits of caramelized fats right there? Little caramelized Pancetta. Caramelized pancetta. What's going to happen? If in Rome, they would be caramelized jowls. Jowl. How do you say a jowl in Italian? Guanciale. 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 Eh. 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 Guanciale. Eh. Okay, right now the pan's kind of hot, so you got to be careful. But what you're going to do is you're going to pour in this half a cup of wine. Now, what does that do, pouring in the wine? Well, what's going to happen is we're going to deglaze the pan. What does that mean? We're going to bring the flavors that stuck to the pan and caramelized. Ah. into the sauce, into the stock that we're making right now. We're going to turn up the heat a little bit. And we're going to let that simmer. By simmering it, we're going to do two things. We're going to reduce the alcohol content in it. 
but we're also going to reduce the liquid content and we're going to thicken it. We're going to condense the flavors so that when so we add in tomatoes later, we then dilute the flavors. Does that intensify the flavor? It will. It will intensify the flavor, but we want to do that because later we're going to add this to the tomato sauce, which has a lot of liquid already in it. There are some tribes that believe that the hot pepper goes in at the beginning of the dish. The beginning. Of, of any dish that requires red pepper. And there are other tribes that feel that the red pepper goes in at the end. Because if you add it at the end, it doesn't make it so, so powerfully overwhelming. Myself, I like to add a little bit in the beginning and a little bit at the end. I figure, let's ignore controversy. A little of both. Do a little compromise. Bit. Compromise. We'll call it a compromise. You know, I'm a diplomat at heart. Let's go back and finish your sauce on the stove. Now, this is how I do it. Again, I add my tomato sauce now because, see, what I like is the red hot pepper now starts to release its flavor into the base of the stock. So now we've got a, that pancetta that was not flavorful. I want you to taste this because, you know, I know I don't like to make great mistakes, but I want you to taste that. Go ahead and taste that. The pancetta is very good. It's got flavor already. Very okay? good. So I'm going to add the tomato sauce at this point, which our recipe calls for, that we strain through our food processor, our manual food processor. We're going to incorporate those together. Look at that wonderful dish coming together in there, right? So you use a bucatini or a perciatelli. The dish is called Bucatini alla Romana. It is squisito. Absolutely delicious. When the water is briskly boiling, add salt. I prefer coarse sea salt from Sicily. It's always good. Don't ever add the salt before the water is boiling because adding the salt to unboiled water will make it even longer for the water to boil. Cook the pasta as directed on the package, but do check on it so it doesn't overcook. Remember, it will be cooked a little bit when you add it to the sauce. Now, Ron, what we're going to do is we've got our pasta prepared right here. We boiled it al dente. Al dente. Al dente. We're going to add this to our sauce. It's been cooking for about 40 minutes. And that flavor, that pinchetta, and those tomatoes, and that wine have all come together. Of course, that red hot pepper we added. Red hot. It's going to add a lot of sizzle to this dish. What you want to do is gently toss this. You don't want to kind of stir it and mess up the pasta. You just kind of want to gently toss this so it comes together. Now, what we're going to do now is we're going to add the cheese. And why we add the cheese at the end is we don't want it to melt into the dish. Exacto. We want it to be incorporated into the dish. Now, we added a pecorino romano to the this dish. The sheep cheese of Rome. The sheep cheese. We don't want the cheese to melt into the dish. That's why no, we added no, it at the end. No, no, no. Otherwise, we have pizza. Pizza. We don't want pizza. So we're going to gently toss this. And then why don't you go ahead and do that. And I'm going to get our dishes ready right here because you and I want to taste this dish. Beautiful. Look at that. Go ahead and add that on that dish. We got a cheese stored fresh in vacuum. Now, is it true that the Italians twist their pasta well, when they you place know, it in? Well, you know, the Italians like to do this. Watch. They have to like, they like to twirl it. We are here with Chef Ricky, who is having great difficulty During twist, the twirl. During twisting the twirl. his bucatini alla romana. Bucatini, as you know, is a difficult dish. You have to twirl it. And if you twirl it the wrong way, it like splatters the tomato sauce. So you're just going to twist it up like that? Chef Ricky. This is very good. Is it good? Very I'm good. still having trouble twisting it. Well, keep on twisting. Mm. Very good. Try it. I'm going to taste it. Hold on. You're left-handed. I'm right-handed, Ronnie. No, I can tell by the way you twirl. You twirl wrong. Am I supposed to twirl the other way? Ah, that's what most people do, the people who know what they're Clockwise. Doing. Clockwise. Ah, I've always twirled counterclockwise. No, you're going to yesterday. You have to go to tomorrow. You tomorrow. To go, you have to go. It's going to stop my twirl the whole other clockwise. way. Clockwise. How's this? Better. It's not bad. Let me see you take it out of the dish, though. Like this. Good. Good. That's good. Yeah. Chef Ricky, congratulations. Mi complimenti.